All right, everybody. Welcome to Global Comic Safari. Uh, we're doing a, uh, a new item this week. If you saw last week's episode, it was on uh, New Mutants 87. This week, we're doing a, a market talk just to talk about uh, some sales and some figures and some interesting trends going on in the uh, foreign market for 2019. Uh, with me again is uh, Matt Boyball uh, from Foreign Comic Collector Magazine. Uh, so, you know, we're going to we're gonna do something a little different this week and just kind of show some sales figures, talk about some uh, things we've seen in the market. Real important. Very, very important. And I got to tell you, John, that that intro, I just love it. It just gets my blood flowing. Oh, I like it. It's good. <laughs> good stuff. I like uh, who, who did that for us. Uh, my, my buddy Todd, um, he's working on getting his professional website up and running. But we will as soon as he has it up and running, we're going to drop him, his name and a link to his site. And the guy does excellent work. And I just love that with the 300s come flashing in like that. Oh, awesome. absolutely. Good stuff. Yep. All right. So you wanted to start this one and just show a couple things we picked up since we're talking about the market and what's happened. Let's show what we've we've grabbed recently. Exactly. Okay. So recently, I've been hunting a lot of stuff. I've got a lot of stuff in the mail on its way to me now. But I have received a couple of books. This is the Brazilian Conan one. It's the oh. Mundo de Aventuras, number 107. Uh, it's So it's a Conan one edition. What's neat about this one is you'll notice the coloring is, is like kind of pastel-y. Oh, I like Not the blue. Quite, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. And like, um, I don't know, this is, this is one of the neater ones. I've been looking for this for quite a long time. And believe it or not, this book's going to show up later in the episode when we hear from Maria Lisa. She right. is a Portuguese seller, and I got that from her. Uh, that is a, a, a big Conan 1 edition I needed for my set. Um, also, this this book just gives me the chills, John. This is one of oh, those wow. Reina de la Costa Negras. These are, and one day we're going to have to talk about this more on, uh, on the show. These are those pre-Conan 1970 Marvel, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, whoa, one of my books fell off the bottom. Um, a lot of people uh, think that Conan's first appearance in comic books was 1970, uh, in uh, you know uh, in the Marvel the Marvel 1970 Conan, but that's not true. He actually appears in Mexico since the 50s. Now these are from the 60s, but they're just beautiful, beautiful books. This is issue 49. Oh, and we left, it, we left that off the report. That was a big sale too. That when they had the first run of that. Yeah, I mean, and it, it it was it sixteen k for the first eight issues, something like that. And it, I don't see why not. I mean, it's not crazy. That, it, it's not at it. crazy at all. I mean, though, but the, this one's from the sixties. Those ones that sold were from the fifties. Yeah, those were were earlier. But but these are beautiful, beautiful books. I mean, it, I was stoked to get this one. And Conan's a blonde in these. He's a blonde, and apparently he's got a twin in this one. I I didn't. I didn't know why that was. Um, let me put this other comic back in there. I do a double bag boarding system. So one of the things I do is I put these in backwards. So the bottom's down here, right? So I shove in a book with a board, and then I put this into another mylar for a total uh, a two a two mil mylar for a total of four, five, six mils of mylar in all my books. I'm well, crazy. Yeah, you are. But we knew that um, already. Yeah, everyone knew that already. So that was a big, a big buy. Also, with that book, I bought these that Conan. This is a more of a modern uh, foreign yeah. Iron Man one. Um, I bought these from a guy named JF. Uh, he's a super sorcerer out of uh, French Canada. He's a a really close friend, wonderful guy. This, I believe, I don't even remember the country. I think it's Spanish. Dolmen. Yeah, I believe that's um, Spanish. I've, I've, uh, Adam Hughes had some work in some of those early dolmens. Yeah, dolmens, and and it's like, what does it say? The 2012. So you know, no, it's, it's modern, cool but it's still very cool, and I, I liked it. I also got out of that same buy, my buddy JF. There was a a more modern printing of Star Wars that happened in. Oh shit! I think it was 2008. I don't remember when it was, but it was it was Editions Atlas, and there was this whole pack of stuff 
that came with the Editions Atlas book. Now, I'd had the book before, huh. but I had never had this thing. It, it was like folded, and and the book was, and these these were in there with the book, and it. They're like, I'll try. I'll, I I wish I had more time to talk about them. I want to run through them really quickly. Some cool but, promo item. There's all kinds of, of neat little promo stuff in here. Um, it's got like a, a mail away thing. This little piece is super cool. It's like a little booklet that came with it. Another mail away thing. Another like flyer thing. I mean, it just here's like a C3PO like model. Um, there's a more stuff to it. I mean, they just packed it full of promo stuff. This is very like retro X looking, though. Yeah, and this is like this is like a a model, like an X-wing model you could order. Really cool stuff. And so this publisher, when they when they uh, printed the Star Wars books, there they they went they they went above and beyond. I mean, they did some really. And it's French. This is French. Oh, that's right. So I, I got that to go along with my Atlas. And this is probably the most modern Star Wars one I have for my set. So I got that stuff from JF. I got that, the Dolmen and the Reyna from JF. Again, amazing, beautiful, beautiful book. I'm, I have two more of them coming in the mail. And then the Very Cullen, nice. man. So that's Very what I've got nice. recently. Well, I'm not, I wasn't going to show this one, but uh, I also got this one from JF. Randomly, uh, I showed this. Oh, really? on, I showed this on Tales from the Flip Side a few weeks ago. Uh, the oh, the Polvera, <laughs> the infamous log issue. So yeah, I love that. He he was trying to sell me something, and he pulled this out, and I'm like, all right, you sold me. Why not? So that's a and that's a nice copy too. Yeah, uh, I that's like a it. very Good nice copy. copy. You know, you got to buy obscure. Um, the other things I kind of picked up. Uh, I've shown these off on the Tales Flip side as well, but I guess apparently I've decided I'm working on a 227 set. Woo! 227 so set! We got the French. Not the nicest right. condition. Not my favorite edition, but it's got the Superman Batman logo and the you know the yeah, top stripe in yellow. But you know, I like get a, it's like you get you get a set when you get a set. Mm -hmm. Got the Brazilian Super Amigos digest size. Oh, these don't show up good. Um, That's a cool one. Yeah, the weird one with this one is it's got Robin on it down in the bottom instead of instead the of the, the demon and the maiden. Yeah, yeah, and the interior is completely different. It's a whole other different story. For whatever reason, Abril decided they wanted to use that two two seven background because it's the best cover out there. Yeah, yeah. And then this has been the gem of the the set for me so far is the uh, oh man the Evo. so. And that I just, one's a beauty. The brown and the orange, just great coloring. Um, again, none of these are super high grade. They're all fairly low grade, but you know, you take what you can get, and you're happy for it. And that one is definitely one of the jewels of the two two seven set. And and we decided just today that I think that's probably going to be episode two or three for us. Hopefully, number two if we can get our stuff together. So we'll talk yep. more about that set uh, in a very near episode. So yes, up for it and. Uh, we look forward to talking about it. Great buys. Great buys, John. Absolutely. If you go with classic covers. You can't go wrong. Can't. Uh, can't. So I guess we're going to jump into this. Um, so first book we wanted to talk about was uh, the Fantastic Four La Prensa edition. Um, Mexico. From Mexico. We talked about La Prensa a lot. I shouldn't assume we, we've talked about it. But yeah, La Prensa is a Mexican publisher. Uh, this has got a lot of the, the Silver Age and the Bronze Age Marvel stuff is, is through La Prensa. Um, then yep. it went to Mac after that, right? Yeah, that went for, uh, La Prensa had the license, then it shifted over to Mac, and then Mac had it for a while, and then it ended up going to Novidades, I believe, and then um, Novidades had it for a while, um, and then some weird stuff happened. I, I don't know. The, the publishing there, it, it hopped, yeah. you know, all over. Silver bronze, it hops over, but the La Prenza, the early La Prenza stuff. It, yeah, these these are the these are fairly amazing. collectible, fairly sought after. Oh yeah, um, big time. 
So this they, they have this. This is a very good copy. I I didn't study it too hard, um, but it looks like a decent copy. Oh yeah, twenty three hundred bucks is a pretty good price for a foreign that yeah. probably a couple years ago would have sold for a couple hundred. Yep this this might have gone for three four maybe five hundred a couple years ago early on. I'd heard stories that really early on, like I'm talking like even before some of us were around uh, of the FCC crew. Um, I've heard stories that um, you could get some of these books for even as cheap as, I don't know, man, 200 bucks. <laughs> yeah, which makes sense because, I mean, the, the American versions till a few years ago were much lower, too. So it's all kind of mm -hmm. it's all kind of escalated. But as the Americans get so far out of reach, people start looking for affordable ones. I know this one and the uh, the UK edition seem to be the two kind of yeah. premier ones that people are hunting. The Allen classes are 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 heating up for sure. But, but even the Allen classes, I don't think they're quite, quite there with the Laprenzas yet. I, I do think they have the fact that they're in English. So they have that going for them, at least on the American back issue, broader international market. Um, definitely, but definitely have the rarity side on the Mexico and just, you know, conditions and all those things we've talked about before. Yeah, definitely. And these are rare. There's some people that think uh, that this issue, the, the Los Four Fantastic, um, La Prenza of one. I think some people have said we know specifically of maybe between 10, maybe 15 of them that have fully popped out. Um, that's low, dude. 10 or 15. Yeah, that's and, really low. And, and as this market grows, we'll get a little better grasp of it. But you know, early readings are it's not an easy book, mm -mm. Mm -mm. not at all, not at all. And that's why it makes the idea that. You could get some of these these early Marvel premium first issues for two hundred, maybe two fifty, three hundred bucks back in the day, yeah. um, way early. Uh, so crazy to think, you know what I mean? It's just oh, nuts. So, sticking with classic Marvel, we jumped to another first appearance. Um, this is also branded as uh, the Fantasticos, Los Fanta Four Fantasticos. Um, See how they added an S? Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, so just, just for us to butcher it. Um, for, uh, you know, so I, this also La Prensa. Mm -hmm. um, it's issue number 35, which reprints Strange Tales 110, which is obviously First Doctor Strange. First Doctor Strange. This is a big, this is a biggie issue. And this is a good price. 500 bucks, basically. Yeah, um, and uh, true, the Americans fallen a little bit. So this is really probably, I'm betting, pushing half of the American value. If yeah, not, and that, if not closer, that's kind of crazy. You know, we've talked about this. Is there going to be a point where some of these foreign start inching up closer to the American? And is it possible, gasp, that a that a rare foreign could actually get more than an American in the same grade in an equal type setting? It's possible that future could be coming. I don't know, but man, it does, like you'll this, hear it here. Yeah, this, this this is a big deal. You know. Once, you know, I, I've always kind of believed that in the foreign world, at least, you don't necessarily have the collectors that have the really deep pockets. But anytime you start getting past and closer into that half a G, a G, two Gs, um, you're getting into some really, really yeah. bigger stuff. Yeah, where, rare. yeah, exactly. So we wanted to talk about one more uh, Silver Age Marvel type book. And. This is actually not a book, but it's a lot of uh, X Men, um, mm -hmm. nineteen total issues. Also, La Prensa, so e Uncanny X Men one to I think it's nineteen. Yeah, nineteen dollars. Yeah, that's that is actually whoever bought this got a good deal because I think the Los Hombres X by itself, depending on its condition, could be in the grand range um, because it is also one, another one of those premium early Marvel. Uh, that La Prenza did. And and remember, La Prenza didn't do these like years later. A lot of these La Prenza books are, if I remember correctly, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but they're between six months and a year and a half of the American originals. So these are fucking old, man. These things oh, yeah. came out early 60s, had to survive conditions in Mexico, you know, and even like, just like with the Los Fantástico, Os, uh, for one, where we think maybe 10 or 15 exists, I think there's probably a, a, a little more of the Los Hombres X 
probably more than that that have well, been seen. Years later, you know, even X Men versus Fantastic Four one American, you know, there's there the rarity is less. Yes, exactly. Um, so, but still, I, it's not like there's millions, a bunch of them all running around all over the place. No, and they're to hard good, to find. To get a good run like this is just impossible. Oh, yeah. This is this is somebody that had a set and you know. Maybe a dealer got a hold of it and marked it up, but this may just be an original owner as well. This is an original owner. We know the guy. His name is Augusto. Oh, is okay. And he had originally listed this run, I thought, for like ten grand at one point in time. All right. It was so. his it, it was listed for a lot higher at one point in time, but I think he just brought it down over the yeah, over the, time to uh, uh, an amount that someone felt comfortable. And I think someone got a deal here, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I, I think that's a good price. A lot of keys in there. I mean, just just a lot of great books. And the condition looks... They look good, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to... You know, it's not... Again, not American Standards and 9.8 and all that stuff that doesn't exist, yeah. but definitely solid copies for this kind of book. And an original owner. This comes from his collection. He's had this uh, since he bought it, I believe. So it's, well, it's kind of cool. That is definitely cool on its own. Yep. Well, as we wanted to kind of talk about... Big books approaching uh, U.S. market prices. Here's another one. This is uh, this was on um, Comic, Comic Link, Comic, Comic Connect. Connect, Comic Connect last month, um, and this was the uh, SM129. Is this the Mac? This is the Mac. The Mac, a 9.6. Sorry, it's a little small to read, so I'm losing my. Uh, my vision as I get old here, I guess. Uh, a 9.6, which just on its own is insane that it exists a oh, 9.6 yeah. out of Mexico. Uh, you had mentioned you thought there were two 9.6s. I think there were two 9.6s. These 9.6s came out of a dealer out of Canada. And um, I think I, I've talked about this elsewhere before. People might have heard me talk about this. But there was a dealer in Canada who was – getting collectors in Mexico, Central America, South America to send him foreign editions. He would give them credit on his store. Huh. Okay. So that they could buy American books, but he was then you. So he was a very forward thinking dealer. I'm not going to drop his name because I don't know if you would want me to, but he was a forward looking dealer and he knew that, that these foreign editions were cool and had some value. And yeah, he pulled this thing where he was like, Send me foreign editions, and I will give you credit in my store for um, American books. And I think this is one of those ones that he got doing that. And I think he ended up with two in 9.6 and maybe one in 9.4. So he got a group of them. Now, oh. the ironic thing about this one, John, is that a collector that we know, unfortunately, this book came up on eBay and – the dealer wanted 300 bucks for it, right? <laughs> and and he was trying to talk him down. And the dealer said, off of eBay, because I knew the dealer, I want 275 for it. And at the time, I still thought this book was probably maybe 50 to to $100. Like, I might have only paid – this is crazy to think, right? But this was years ago, a couple years ago. I might have – I thought this book was probably worth more in the – 200 range at the time because i thought that for whatever reason someone there was more high grade max available because yeah. there were there was another nine six and i think a nine four market was just flooded it was just flooded at the time so the guy passed he passed on it at 275 and i'm still friends with him and when this came to market and we saw this book going into these heights he wanted to put a gun in his mouth and blow his brains out I'm sure. We didn't even mention the price. It ended at uh, the gavel hit at 19.50, which, when you compare American sales, I, I did a quick look. They look to be selling right around 3,700, so over half. And that you know, is a big deal. And this, I, you know, we talk about rarity. Just to put that in perspective, there's a slightly over 400 nine sixes of the U.S. version <laughs> at CGC. So. You know, put add in CBCS, we're probably talking another oh, fifty. So yeah, easy. Not not an uncommon book, but when you when you look at a you know Mexican Mac, it is definitely you're not going to find another one. Whoever has the other nine six isn't parting with it cheap after this. 
No, and he's probably or her is probably very happy. And I can tell you, you know, these these Macs are very difficult. Uh, JF, the guy we were just talking about, we had a conversation the other day where we were talking about what's the rarest one twenty nine, and he's a he's a good sourcer, and he believes that the Mac has become harder to find than the Colombian Cinco. That is a trip. And we talked about Colombian be rare on the flip side a few times. Yeah, they're rare as shit, and so he. He's saying that he thinks he can find Colombian Cinco's easier than the Mexican Max. He's having a harder time finding them. Um, so that's that's interesting. And I just wanted to f- flip another one that I happened to pull out. This was an eBay sale uh, about a month ago for a, more of a mid-grade book, mid to low-grade book, uh, $250. So That's a solid price. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's solid. a good price. And, you know, as you said, they're, they're getting harder and harder to find. So just keep your eye on 129 has been a big set. I remember when you did your first show in Indianapolis and kind of displayed with Tim. That's the one that caught my eye. So, yeah, you were there. You saw it. That's right, I mean, John. You saw that. So they, yeah, I mean, this book and that set, just because there's so many different presentations of it. Now, this is a pretty common one. This one doesn't <laughs> stick out as much. But, you know, once you get digging into it, it's the rarity and everything else that, that gets yeah. you going, oh, my God. Well, and maybe it was pretty common a few years ago. Right now, this Mac is hard to find. And so, you know, that people get the easy ones dug out. And then after that, it's hard to say where you'll find the next next stash. Hey, uh, do you want to know how much I paid for mine? Uh, $40. $35. <laughs> and it's a nice one. Of course, this was a few years ago. But, yeah, I mean, this is a great example of what is hap- of what we're seeing in the market. I wanted to highlight one other 129 sale. This is one I was actually watching, and, and you convinced me to bid on. I apparently bid a little too cheap. Um, this is the Greek, and, and we've talked about how much I like the Greek lettering and the oh, Greek I love it. appearance that just that just pops. Uh, this one, I remember what, what condition was this guy in? It was a decent condition book, right? Yeah. It, uh, so I know the seller of this as well, and um, I asked him that. I said, "It looks nice. What do you think it? What do you think it grades out at?" He's thinking it on a solid VF. And honestly, for Greek books, that's rare. Most oh, of yeah. the Greek Cabanas Hellas are trash. Um, they just they didn't survive as in as nice a condition. So honestly, if this book were to be put in a slab and it might get into that BF range, or God forbid, maybe even yeah. you know, a nine range or something, we're talking sky's the limit almost. Yeah, it's it's a thousand dollar book and it's a thousand dollar book in in those higher ends. So someone got a good deal, you know. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe this is pressable. Uh, who knows? Yeah. This is a I, this is a I, solid sale. I bid on it, and I, I went a little too cheap. I As soon as it ended, I was like, dang it, why didn't I go a little more? But I, I'm still licking wounds from some other purchases <laughs> we'll talk about later. So, Well, and John, I've seen this book in a lower grade than this go for $500. Yeah. You know, a lot of it, if you're building the set, this is, this is another part of the market you got to realize – when you got lots of set builders trying to find the tough books, you could see these books go for higher because you know it's like it's like chum in the water for sharks, kind of. Absolutely. All right, so we talked about you know the one that's broken my bank for a while, but uh, and we talked about these books several times, but we mm-hmm. I, I don't think we can have an honest market report without talking about them. We have uh, to. Full disclosure: I won this auction. This was the book I bought. Um, Matt knew of the book because the sellers within the group, um, it was listed as a, as a near mint. I had several kind of people look at it. I had some pressers look at it from pictures, you know, near mint might be a slight stretch, but definitely thought with the press, it's going to fall into the very fine to, to very fine plus range, you know, who knows on, on the right day where it'll hit, but for it's pretty book that is extremely rare air. Um, last we checked, uh, when I purchased it on the flip side, there were none in the census. No, uh, not. And there was only the German reprint had a few in there, but there was nothing actually in the census, which still amazes me that nobody slabbed one of these. Um, well, there's, there is a CBCS slab, but I don't think it, I'm not sure it's as nice as this. I, I don't remember what the grade was. No, there may be some others floating around in there that we don't know. Um, and there definitely could be other nice copies, but there aren't going to be many. So this is the same mm-hmm. kind of thing. Uh, uh, this is a slightly later book, but it, you know the, these Mexican non-canons were not as well collected as you'd kind of said, and they just didn't quite 
vibe with the audience, so they weren't kept as well. And this yep. just become the famous issue of the run. Um, this is the key of the run. I mean, and, and it's a great and, cover. It's a great cover. And remember, we think this is an HNG copy. This is from a pedigreed foreign collection. It doesn't have the stamp. You checked it for the stamp, correct? I did. I did. And sadly, it, it did not. But it does. It did come from one of the main H and G sellers. Uh, it's by a guy named Ulysses, and his mom worked for Hector Nava, who is the guy that built the H and G collection. And for me, I mean, that in itself that it. Okay, so what if we can't prove it's an H and G? We yeah. know it came from the H and G collection, and for me, that makes this book a part of Mexican comic history. Yeah, and I, like I said, I this is one of the books that caught me into, you know, the niche. I know you hate that word or people yeah. hate that word, but some people hate that word. JF it, hates that word. It's, it's one of the books that got me in. I don't even know where I saw it. this and I, the, the big booty Gwen cover. Whew. Somebody flash issues that. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. And I, and it just stuck with me and I kind of hung around and was in the Facebook group for a long time. I was watching sales and watching things and, you know, finally, finally connect to somebody that was selling one. I'm like, oh, that's it. We're, we're buying them. Yeah. I bought the Big Booty Gwen through you, and I bought um, my first 128 through another member of the group. And at the time, you thought I was crazy for the price I paid then. You didn't know I, me then. I did. But think you knew you the seller. Crazy. Yeah. But, you know, again, one day, and I know we talk about this all the time, one day we're going to find – uh, the spy hardcore Spider-Man collectors that are used to spending big bucks on Spider-Man books who think they've seen it all and they're going to find out about this book and they're going to go, I have to have one. Then they're going to look for one and they're not going to find the fucker. No, it's just it's, not it's, there. ID people are the biggest completionists out there. Like you get a hardcore Spider-Man fan, they are completionists. It's, you know, you can't do that with a lot of the DC characters. You can't even do it with, you can do it with a lot of the other ones, but they're just less cult following. Spider-Man yeah. the completionist thing and i think if a couple of those high-end people get the bug to get these foreign editions of some of these sky's the limit so your investment is safe let me just that, put it to you that way yeah you may think i'm crazy and my wife thought i'm crazy but i i went for it so, <laughs> so well, American books and i'm still licking my wounds i applaud you sir because this is a this is a beautiful book if you know if i'd had the money i i'm not sure i would have gone that high but now looking back in retrospect, if I, I mean, I think I, you know, there's a good chance you could have a highest graded here and you could have it for a long time. If you slab this, I was talking to our buddy, George, who we've talked about a few times on, on mother show. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had talked to him and I'm like, all right, I'm going, we think three might be the number. It might be a three K book. And I was, I was actually pretty happy when it ended where it did. So that's a great, a great sale and, and a great buy. Just to compare, about the same, a little bit time after this one sold, which was <laughs> a torn in half, but it's complete, a rag. raggedy copy sold for $152 in auction with six bidders. I, I watched and this one, and I, I I think I put a $60 bid in, just shits and giggles. Uh -huh. And it did, not, uh, it did not disappoint. Now, there is one at auction right now out of Mexico. Mid grade mm -hmm. sellers wanting sixteen hundred. I think it's just a tad high at the holidays. Rustled a little bit of a lull. Yeah. If I had my gut, I'd say about twelve hundred. It would sell pretty quick, but that sixteen hundred just a tad high. Might be, yeah. And that's especially, we know especially that sales seller. tax and everything else with eBay now. It's just a lot. We know the seller. His name's Rulo. He's a super collector out of Mexico. I think he's just kind of testing the waters with it. Yeah. I actually don't think he's necessarily all that hot to get rid of it, nope. but he probably threw that price on there just to see if someone would bite. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's not far off market. It's just a tad. No, just a tad. And I think, and I, but I mean, it's a really nice copy too. It's yeah. not as nice as yours, no, but, but it's, it's a solid, it's nice. you know, it's a solid mid five, six. Yeah. It's a solid mid grade. Um, I wanted to highlight a few other auctions just because around this time, November, December, there was uh, an auction lot out of Mexico and an auction lot in the U.S. that went um, lowest sale I saw was for this uh, 138, which really doesn't have a ton going for it. It's got a Kazar cover, uh, no Gwen. Yeah. Uh, just it, you know, it's a pretty easy one to find from my experience. I, I, I've bought 
five or six of them somehow. And they just, I don't know why this one is so plentiful. Um, I don't know either. But I still think but, it's a I mean, pretty for, good price. For 70 bucks? Yeah, I mean, all the others seem to end about 150 to 200 Yeah, this was a good good deal for somebody, I think. Other than the non-keys. Uh, yeah. This one, the blood issue that we've talked about, you've talked about several times. Mm -hmm. um, first first time we see blood on a Spider-Man cover. Yep. Um, this one does have a missing corner up there, so that, yeah. that doesn't take away. But at $152, that's, that's a real good buy, in my opinion. Yeah, considering considering that the corner's jacked. Um, you know, this is an issue that has room to grow. Um, people like to think, oh, well, who cares? First blood on cover. Well, I think it relates to the fact that, you know, the Comics Code Authority, you know, in the normal American comic book world, we talk about how in the 70s, Marvel wanted to present stories and, you know, drug issues and all, you know, there's always been this push and pull with the Comics Code Authority. Well, there's something fascinating about that. And that's that foreign countries and foreign publishers didn't have that. So in Mexico, they could show big, look at that booty on Gwen. I mean, you just want to yeah. grab it. It's also got I a mean, good Gwen cover, so there's a lot going yeah, on. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. It's the first time blood, and that's a lot of blood. This isn't like getting punched no. in a little bit of blood. He's no. lying in a pool of fucking blood. And yes. you've got Gwen's nice little booty to grab right there. This is a great, this is a great one. I think. Absolutely. Um, this one is one that confused me a little bit. This one went for 212, a little higher end. I think condition was pretty nice on it. It's nice. Yeah. 138. Um, it's not particularly, you know, it's not got the Gwen centric. It does have her there kind of in the corner, um, but it's got the Rhino. So maybe that's what it is. It just popular maybe. Villain, you know, good coloring, a good copy. So that could be part of it. But 200 yeah, is a little high. And you know, with this one, though, I don't see, I don't know about you, John, but I don't see this one as often. This one, I feel like, is on the rare side. How many of these have you seen? Do, do you remember? Not as many. I think I have two, but one is just a complete rag. Um, just put audience in perspective. I've, I've bought in anyone that has come through the group for sale at any kind of reasonable price, and I've, I've put together a pretty good partial run, and I've bought yeah. in duplicates that come about, so... You know, I, I'm not speaking out of the loop. No, uh, John's in the loop. He's he's non-canon crazy. Um, but I have seen a lot less of this one for some reason. I, I don't know why. So yeah. It, it just it makes sense. Me as for a, a non-kind of key cover, nothing, no strong element. It just seemed to grab pretty high. I bet you someone needed it for the run. Remember, we've got to talk about this too. There are people in America like you, John, and – Interestingly enough, there's a lot of Mexican collectors going back now with the renewed American interest and going, why don't I have these in my collection? I should have these, right? Absolutely. And so we're seeing we're seeing not only American buyers chase these, but we're seeing a lot of Mexican uh, collectors also now renewing their love of their non-canon uh, run and going back and trying to complete it, which it's a notoriously difficult run to complete. So I bet you this. I bet you the reason this one went as high as it did is because someone needed it. Oh, it. Might be a rarity thing. Who know? I don't know yeah. why one thirty eight is not rare. This one does appear rare, and I don't know why two different issues so next to each other would be so. I don't know. And we always you know, talk we, that the end of the run gets rare in the one eighties. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it gets way rare, especially one eighty. Two on or 183 because 82 is the Gwen boot, big booty 183 mm -hmm. on on is really rare. This one uh, snuck to me as a bargain. Um, this is a 181, yeah. so very late in the run. Um, this was out of Mexico though, so that could be why it wasn't the same auction as the other ones that were American mm -hmm. sellers. Um, so a little less visibility, a little less people willing to gamble on it. But at mm -hmm. $200 for a pretty nice copy, this is That's actually, a nice copy. This is also. Probably an HNG copy. Oh, is this, this also from the same from Ulysses? Yes. Yeah, so this one snuck by, and I thought this was a great purchase for someone. You know, it's a good cover. It's got you know the, the good girl kind of art on it. It's got yep. Spider Man, uh, got the yellow. So a lot going for it. Whoever snagged this one, I feel like did a great job. Yeah, they got a good deal. It's a nice copy. It's beautiful. These and these all came up too soon after me buying the other one, and I just <laughs> couldn't, I couldn't go in any deeper. You couldn't pull it. No. Yeah, I, when these came up, I couldn't 
do I did a little bit of bidding on them, just like tracking bids. But I had my my eggs were in other baskets this Christmas. Yeah. Um, I, I, and so when these non cannons came up, I was just like I had to just sit there and watch them. But I I, I couldn't play in that field. This is the big hitter of the sh auction that was not the mm -hmm. uh, wedding. Um, the Satanica. And we say that because in her hair it says Satanica. Um, it's a very Vampirella pose. Even though yep. there's another issue in the run very late that does the vampy vampy steel. This is very close to that. It's a little Stranko vibe with the boots. Um, but it's cool. One, it's got that weird like robot-y thing in the back. It's got a cool Spidey swinging in. Yeah, this it's is a cool one. Yeah, and I do like the yellow on the uh, on the non cannons. A lot of yellow covers. Yeah. Um, Maybe it's because the, the 129 just sticks in everybody's head and they, they kind of go to that color scheme a lot. Uh, yeah, maybe. Never dwelled into me, but as I'm looking at them, um, this one has kind of arisen outside of kind of the late issues and the Big Booty Gwen as as a very, very popular one. Um, I, I know the seller, and uh, he bought his at auction for a pretty similar price, um, made a little profit on it, but it's it's been selling in this... 400 plus range a couple times three four sales now so this is a good book um one to you know if you see this one come up this is one to grab because it does yeah. seem to be emerging as one of the popular issues well it, she's gorgeous i mean look at her look at how jose luis duran drew her she's or or i don't know where he swiped this from i think it's from a vampy somewhere um, so I, i've never seen the original where it got swiped from, or if it was originally Jose Luis Duran. But I think there's just something about the way she's looking at you, the, the Satan being in her hair, the Satanica being in her hair. That's not often you see something like that on a Spidey cover. This this book just turns people on, I think. Yeah, this is a great one. So this is one to keep an eye out for. Yep, definitely. We've, we've beat on the non-canons enough. Um, I did want to highlight one other book that you know has kind of been on my favorites list trying to watch trying to see what's going on and a extremely high grade copy just hit the market um Woo! the uh asm 300 italian edition um i'm not even gonna pronounce it because i'm gonna butcher it um lomo ragno lomo ragno uh cgc 9.4 which is the highest graded at cgc mm -hmm. we'll note that you have the uh CBCS 9.4. Um, I have a 9.2 and a 9.0, and I know a lot of guys with – I know most people with the 9.0s and above. We, we can account for most of the copies of a very small group of people that have been kind of chasing this book. Um, it's a really tough book coming out of Italy. They don't take care of them as well, and they are notoriously terrible shippers. So to mm -hmm. get one in this kind of grade is impressive. It's a cardstock cover. You can't press it. Um Again, I know the seller here. This one is one you don't actually know. He's he's more out of the yeah. he's more out of the uh, the the standard American comic trade. Um, he he's definitely going fishing with this price, um, three thousand dollars or best offer. But he doesn't really want to sell it. I, I kind of talked to him, so it is what it is. Yeah. I I understand that. Uh, just kind of for a frame of reference, I found a recent sale of a high ish grade. Um, I mean, and again, a hardcore Spidey fan might look at that and go, I want it. And $3,000 is actually, and nothing. This was actually a pretty low price here. This was an 8.5 yeah. of the same book. Went for 189 I've generally seen that sell a little closer to 200 or 225 um, I purchased my 9.2 at about 350 which I thought was a good price. I've seen a couple 9.0 sell in the $300 range. So this was a little bit of a low price. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, if if you were to ask me what would I offer for the nine four, I, what would, I would you offer for that? I think I'd be in the six hundred range, um, just because it's the highest graded. Now, what happens next week if somebody pulls a nine six? Then you know, which, which one becomes less relevant? Um, you know, nine eight shows up. I still don't think a nine eight's worth three k. You know, probably that's uh, a, that's over a grand, but I'm not sure exactly how high over. So that. Yeah, if it were me, that's where I would price that book. Uh, but again, rare air. This has one been a lot of people's radar for a long time. Mm -hmm. And of the ASM 300 covers, that's just the most unique one with that black cover. It's probably the most loved. It's not the rarest, but it's probably no. the most loved of all the 
of all the four and three hundred. And that's a book. That, that's a book beautiful. that gets people in. Like it gets yeah. their eyes, and that's going to get an American collector to go, "What the heck is that? I need it." Yeah, exactly. An American collector is going to go, "Wow, I love that." Without the three hundred and just the black, it allows McFarland's artwork to just kind of stand on its own. Like I've said before, I think I've, I've harped on this till I was blue in the face. The American three hundred schizophrenic to me. It's it's it, the three you know all the three hundred. Oh, I know right. Marvel was doing that at the time with issue numbers, but I just love the simplicity of the all black cover. This is a beautiful book, and whoever got this got it at a good price. Well, and what I what I will say is. You know, I, I, you're from the foreign niche. I was more from the, you know, the the modern collector, the speculator, the investors, um, mm -hmm. and this is from the the CBSI group. is is, is the guy that got that book and uh, the comic book invest team. And you know, there's a lot of us that have been hunting those high grade copies. Uh, you know, I know a guy that got the nine two recently, and so there's less than a dozen in that nine zero and above range, and mostly nine zero nine two. So this mm -hmm. this is just impressive and people are watching because this cover does capture the non-foreign collectors just because it is it's just a, a clash of, of too many cool items and it's yep. common enough and it's been in the market long enough that people are going i've seen that i want it yep yep so, yeah it's it's definitely a sale of note so oh that one hasn't sold yet so just oh it is that oh this one the yeah this one, one. The nine four is just up in the nine four is you know I think he's kind of just throwing his line out into the deep yeah. ocean sea and seeing what happens. But who knows? For some for some guys in this hobby, three grand's nothing. Somebody Talk may buy it. it. Yeah. But for an ASM fan, that's that's a bad boy book. Yep. So, um, and that's all the sales I wanted to highlight online. We're going to end with a couple of uh, market reports. Market reports from some foreign sellers. Yes. So I wanted to, so I, when we were getting ready to do this episode, I kind of reached out to a couple different uh, sellers of foreigns. I reached out to the very famous Mario from European comics. Uh, uh, I think it's European comics for you. Um, he didn't give me a market report, but he did kind of give me a couple sentences. He said that the uh, market's been great. Uh, he's been selling, 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 and he's going about his business finding European books and selling them on American eBay. We've talked about how there are foreign guys in a lot of these foreign countries who are taking the local indigenous books and throwing them up on American eBay and selling them like gangbusters. Um, so I don't have a full report from him, but I do have from two people. Uh, Maria Lisa is uh, the woman that sold me that Conan. And um, this is what her report said. For 2019 sales, she's based out of Portugal. And she sold 100 comics in 2019. It's a nice little round number. 70% of those were Brazilians, which makes sense. 30% um, of those were Portuguese European. So a lot of people don't understand that, you know, or they might not get that uh, Brazil and Portugal, they both speak the same language. <coughs> so there's a lot of crossover there. So 70% of her sales were from actual Brazilian editions and 30% were actually just printed in Portugal, Portuguese, European. She had a breakdown of buyers. 50% were about regular and the other 50 were new buyers. So that's interesting. 90% were American buyers. Also interesting, 90%. 10% were Canadian and Spanish and other. Uh, the average price per sale uh, for books she was selling was around $20. And 90% of her sales were keys, John. That makes sense. Um, and these are her top five sales from 2019. You've got the Abril Secret Wars 8. You have uh, a Hulk that I don't fully recognize. I'm not sure where. I'm not sure on that one. Um, you have, you know, your classic McFarlane, uh, uh, Arana there. You have an interesting Conan that I... I don't, I don't, I don't recognize that Conan. I've uh, seen Conan the people, Destroyer. Some people bring it up because it's an image of Schwarzenegger. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think Conan the Destroyer. I don't know. Um, that's an interesting sale that she did. And then, of course, that Mundo de Aventro, uh, Aventuras. That was me. I bought that for a hundred bucks. When I and I consider that good. Um, I'm happy. I love it. Um, okay, so another guy that I spoke to. His name is Steve Bridewell. Now, Steve is relatively new to the, to, to the foreign hobby, foreign comic hobby. Um, 
And when I met Steve in my phone as his contact, I've talked to him on the phone a couple times. He's Steve B, foreign comic surfer dude. And it's because <laughs> he's 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 a surfer dude and I like talking to him. He um he's a cool guy. But anyway, I thought that was funny that in my phone context. Steve B, foreign comic surfer dude. So he he also sent me a market report. Um he began selling in February he, 2019. He's based out of the US. Yes, he's in the US. So we have a so we have a report from Maria who's in Portugal and Steve who's here in America. So what Steve is doing is he's buying books, foreign books uh, out on the foreign back issue market. So he's going out into the different sources and the different foreign auction sites. He's bringing in the books and then he's flipping them and selling them on American eBay and using his profits to invest into his foreign collection. And he barely began selling in February of 2019. His busiest month was in June with 45 sales transactions for a total of $2,811. That's pretty good. Uh, 96% of his sales were to buyers from the U.S. So we're seeing that. Uh, uh, the rest of them were outside of the U.S. 20% of his sales this year were repeat customers. So that's interesting. But 80% were brand new customers that he hadn't seen, which makes sense, though, because he just started in February. But I still think that's interesting. But... This is what's interesting I think we need to talk about a little bit. One thing Steve noticed is that this year there were buyers that he thinks had deeper pockets that went in and asked to make deals for everything he had listed on his eBay store. Why do you think that is, John? Because that's the only easy way to get them. Exactly. I, I, I actually think the reason Steve on American eBay had like this kind of – a uh, buyer that came in and said, hey, I want it all, is because Steve, unlike, say, a foreign seller who only has one of one thing, let's say they're out of Mexico and they're just all La Prenza or whatever, if if you're someone that's going out there like Steve who's sourcing these books and has a whole kind of menagerie of different foreigns from different countries, if you are a collector and you're going in and you're looking to buy foreigns and you want to get on the foreign market, if, you, if you're not well-versed in, in sources and foreign auction sites, and all that stuff, it makes sense that you would just try to grab a whole bunch in a, in a bunch, right? Especially if they're keys. So I think that some what Steve is seeing with that is that we're seeing collectors here in America that maybe aren't connected to FCC or to your group or some of the other groups that can find foreigns a little easier because we know the foreign groups on Facebook or we you know, know the foreign auction sites. They're just going in and saying, I want it all. And I want, I, let's just make a deal for all of them. And so I find that very interesting. Um, well, also, I wanted to point out, you know, just thinking about the timeline, June, we we, we posted and had you first on Tales from Flipside um, right around April. Ah, uh, yeah. So that was kind maybe. of when when maybe the, the, the kind of American speculator market kind of got a little hardcore. Not to say there weren't people in there, but I bet that kind yeah. of got a surge and more people talk a about correlation. That. And then through the website, the Comic Book Invest website talked about it a little more. Uh, we've That's got the true. writers talking about it. We've had some crossover from your group. So it's been one of those things that's slowly bleeding over through different different kind of lines. Exactly. And then we have guys like Comic Tom talking about forums as well. So, you know, yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, I thought, find that very interesting. Uh, real quick, this were his top selling books uh, for German. He sold uh, Williams FF1, an FF52, a Tumor Drac 10, uh, Spider Man 1, Spider Man 101, a 129, makes sense, and an Avengers 1. And then he sold out of Italy some Italian Corno FF52, Avengers 8, Conan 1, uh, Luke Cage 1, Dracula 1, Avengers Annual 6, Ghost Rider 1, Spider Man 101. And then out of France, his top books were A Giant Size X-Men 1, X-Men 101, Silver Surfer 4, and X-Men 266. There's some people building that first Gambit set. Um, and then out of Spain, FF48, um, an event that Avengers, uh, the, the first Taskmaster, Star Wars 1. This is out of Spain, so that'd be the redrawn Mundi probably. Or maybe it's the Bruja, uh, Bruguera, I'm not sure. Uh, Giant Size X-Men 1, and a Marvel Spotlight 5 Vertice. So Steve was, I mean, he's got it on too. He's getting the keys and he's releasing them out into the world. And um, the market is, 
He's got three books. I've seen. He's got books. great books, and the market is is right now. Foreigns are are heating up, John. That, that, don't tell me. I've I've been watching them for a couple of years, and they're getting out of my price range quickly. So <laughs> I'm buy them while you can. And uh, like I said, you know, I, you don't have to spend a fortune. And some of these books were twenty bucks. Now shipping may kill you, and that's probably why people prefer to buy through the Americans. But you know, mm. they are not all expensive. You know, we we highlight the high ones, but you know, the the Super Amigos, the two two seven was I think twenty dollars. So. Yeah, not, not a crazy expense. Uh, some of these other ones aren't. So keep your eye out. Don't go crazy. Buy what you like. If you're getting informed, just definitely buy what you like because this is more about the covers and the arts and the history than reading the story. Because most of you aren't going to be able to read the story. So yeah, and most of us aren't going to do that. And you know, like you said, it, the market even still right now, as hot as it is, it, entry level into the market, you can be billing. You could be. You could just have a classic cover that you like. It's not necessarily a key. Build a set out of it. You know, start hunting that down. You you can do some amazing stuff with sets um, for not really that much money. That's the beauty of this. Absolutely. Um, all right. I think with that, we're going to wrap it up. Just wanted to um, – anything you want to plug today? Um, uh, the only thing I want to plug is our Foreign Comics Calling podcast. Uh, you know – John and I try to keep this show short. We, this one we, went a little long. We didn't succeed tonight. <laughs> we didn't succeed tonight. But uh, the Foreign Comics Calling podcast, you know, it's up to an hour, over an hour of four guys just talking foreign comics. We just recorded our, our fourth episode today. Um, please go check it out, Foreign Comics Calling. And you can also find me on Instagram at Define999. He's posting some really cool stuff uh, every day. I had to tell him to slow down. Just so I'm, he I'm run for a while. content. He's got a he's got more posts than I do in like four days, I think. So <laughs> check out some cool books there. Um, I think we're recording in advance, but uh, check out the uh, Tales from the Footside podcast. We're uh, just hit episode 100, and I think next week we're going to have uh, a foreign comic collector on the show. A pretty cool pickup. So uh, Robert should be joining us there. Um, and just also if any collecting or investing or, you know, just comic book interest needs, check out comic book invest and, uh, you know, we'll see you all next week and, uh, highlighting another set on uh, global comic safari. So two, thanks two, seven. Thanks everyone. Congratulations, John, on this, on the tales from the flip side, 100 episode. That's awesome. Thank Congrats, you. Guys.